Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Oh, it feels good in the house of the Lord tonight. There's nothing like being in the presence of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good to see everybody here at the house of the Lord. The precious people of God. The cream of the crop. Amen. We are the cream of the crop. We are the chosen ones. We are the chosen ones. A peculiar people. Oh, yes we are. But you know, hallelujah. There's nothing like coming to the house and just feeling the presence of God. It's just a worship him. You know, whatever situation you're in, oh, God is going to touch that. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many can say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Oh, we had a great time at Alpine yesterday. It was nice and warm. What should I say? Nice and hot. It was nice and hot in our park, but you know what? Just to see those children running around, playing around, and all the adults there, and, and people are uh, receiving things from school. You know, it's so good. You know, it's quite a blessing. Amen. We, we're reaching out to, the, to that community of El Paw. And we're praying for El Paw. We're praying for all the souls there. There's so many people. You know, when I was talking to one, uh, his name was uh, Marti, and he said, you know, El Paw is nothing but Hispanic. There's had over, I don't know how much population it is, but it's about 2,000 in the world. 1,300. All Hispanics. Wow. And I, I was saying, oh, you know what? We're just here to help out our part. We're out here to give out a hand in, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're, we're excited about that, and we're excited that God is moving, God is doing things. You know, God is moving in those hearts. Amen. God is moving in those hearts. Amen. I do have some announcements here tonight. Amen. I have a Monday night lady uh, Bible study online with Sister Vicky. Amen. 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 Sister Vicky doing a great job on the Bible study online. Amen. Hallelujah. And on Tuesday midway, we have a Tuesday midway Bible study at 7 o'clock. Amen. 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 And then on Friday the 26th, we have a farmer's market uh, booth here on Corcoran. Farmers Market Boot, and uh, we're gonna it'll start at 4:30. Hallelujah! The event will start at 4:30. Hallelujah! We need everyone to help. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We need all the help we can get there <coughs> that evening, and it's gonna be a little bit warm, but it's gonna be good. Hallelujah! And we're gonna have, uh, and then on September the 9th, we have a district uh, men's rally in Exeter. Amen. September 9th. Exeter, Raleigh, Ben's Raleigh. Right. Amen. That's great. Amen. So, and uh, I'm excited. What <laughs> I am excited to see Brother Juan here tonight with his wife. Amen. I'm excited to see my brother. Ben, we miss you, Brother Ben. And we'll be praying for you, Brother Ben. Amen. And God is touching you, I know. You know, whatever. So, never mind what the doctor says. Amen. Amen. He's the last answer. He is the answer. Amen. Amen. How many can say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. And I do have some prayer requests here tonight. Amen. And now uh, we want to continue to pray for Betty Walker for uh, comfort and healing. Continue to pray for them. And Nancy uh, Trigino for uh, pray for vertigo. Amen. For uh, Jonathan Huerta for salvation. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Yes. <laughs> Salvation. Amen. Yes. And then uh, our part, we're going to continue to pray for Alpha and for Cochran. Amen. And I do want to, uh, uh, Brother what we want to pray for you. We want to anoint you with oil. That's that. We're going to go into prayer. And anybody that needs uh, an anointing, a church of God, you'll come forward and we're going to pray. Anoint you with God. The Bible says, How did we call on the altars? Middle, come on up. Middle, we want to pray for you too. Middle, we want to pray. Amen. And for those, uh, amen. Right now, in Jesus' name.
here in power. That Jesus is here in the house. That here in power means that he's here in the house. Oh, Jesus. Let's everyone stand tonight. Hallelujah. God is not finished yet. God is not finished. Come on. Let's raise our hands right now. Let's go before every knee right now. That's going to happen. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Give me peace. Hallelujah. Baby, see it if you can, because we are going to pick up an offering tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for this offering tonight. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray for this offering tonight. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit that's here tonight, for the healing power that I feel here tonight, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Bless this holy name. Hallelujah. Bless this offering. We're about to receive Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. You can bring your offering to the front. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
okay, Lord, we put it back on my heart. I feel this refreshed. I got to go out there. I got to do something. I started calling the memorial building, and I started calling this and that and different ones. And finally, I got a hold of the school, and, and uh, the school said, yes, go ahead. And we had two events in July on a, on a, on a was it a Friday or Saturday? On a Friday night. And the first event, we had 47 people, and, or uh, 23 people, and then the next event, we had 47 show up. And, and we were doing this for the kids, but the adults started showing up too. And I said, there was really nothing in now called to do. When the, the adults all show up for the kids' events, right? They don't care if it's just a little backpack giveaway, a little string backpack for, you know, five-year-olds, you know, seventh graders, whatever. They, they were, you know, they're just, they're all lined up to come to our event, eat some pizza, you know, make a mess, have fun, throw some basketball, little kids playing putt-putt, golf inside the gymnasium, and... And, and they didn't charge us, the school didn't charge us, and we're very, very grateful. And then, and then uh, you know, Jessica from the Save the Children Foundation just, hey, when are we gonna do the next one? And when are we gonna do the next one? And I'm like, Lord, I don't know what we're gonna do next. And, and I just had this wild hair to get school supplies. And I said, well, we're gonna maybe do it in our, for Corcoran, we'll do it for Corcoran, you know, this is our main goal, our main goal. You know, things changed and the, the, the city ended up doing a big old school supplies giveaway. And I changed gears and, you just got to know that if I change gears, just kind of look for me because I already left the parking lot. <laughs> and uh, and then everybody's confused, like, well, where are we? Well, what are you doing now? I was like, you, you just see the smoke and the trail, and just 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 catch up with me. Give me a call, and I'll, I'll catch you. Amen. Because just that's just the way I am. I've always been that way, right? <laughs> and uh, and so I just. You know, I just felt this, and I said, okay, and so we're going to do our supply giveaway in Alpha, and everybody's okay, okay, and now we have to scramble for something else, and then the Lord provided for uh, this coming Friday for the uh, har uh, farmer's market, and uh, we got all this donation of nice, very nice sunglasses that we're going to give away from the Lions Club, and have a good partnership with them, and they gave us a bunch of glasses, brand new, they're in cases, and I mean, nice sunglasses, the aviator sunglasses, casual sunglasses, men's, women's style. And, and uh, we're going to give those away at our farmer's market. We'll accept donations. Already got some signage already made. We've got table stuff ready. And what we have to do is just get out there and represent. Yes. Amen. 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 We just got to get out there and represent. Yeah. And then a light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Yeah. Yeah. A light just has to shine. You don't have to worry about what am I going to say? Am I going to get tongue tied? Am I going to get all nervous? Hold on, hold on, and then just shine. Just be there. If somebody asks you a question, just answer. If you don't know, turn to somebody else and say, "Hey, what's the answer to this question?" And we'll be there. We'll be there. We're going to back each other up. So don't don't get all nervous on everybody. Just let's just let's just do it. If we don't know, let's just turn to somebody who does. Yeah. Is that all right with everybody? Right. Amen. Right. So we're just gonna we're gonna face people. You know, we're just going to face people, some of the same people that, you know, I've known for many years. So some of us have known for many, many years. Some of you are related to half of them in corporate. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we're just going to be out there and we're just going to represent and shine. You know, we're just going to be ambassadors to Christ. You know, we want to lead people. We want people to be able to feel comfortable and uh, feel like they can come talk to us and say, hey, that's cool. If that's all we get, that's cool. Then I'll take it. Right? We'll take it. That's something good in their eyes, right? When the world says, hey, that's cool, yeah. that, that's a plus. Yeah. Yeah. Right? We have to compete with a lot of nasty stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And so if we, if we get a hey, a thumbs up, that's cool. I like that. Hey, I'll take that all day long. Let that seed be planted in somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And so here we are. Get out there yesterday. I mean, these kids ran Brother Dario rugged. <laughs> my ankles are still hurting from playing basketball. And uh, I couldn't sleep right because my, my shoulders were sore and my arm was sore. <laughs> oh, man. I'm in shape because round is a shape. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> me and Dario, man, we were tired. We were pouring down sweat. And I was doing these videos in between. And I called up Jessica and Yolanda, her her, her uh, supervisor lead and we did this little video on our Facebook and it got posted in the Delano news uh, for the Delano uh, website information news website and it got posted on there and they posted our event and all this stuff yeah. and, 
And so they, they even transferred the videos over. They forwarded the videos over to their site, too. And uh, so, you know what? Praise God. And they said, hey, we, we want to make this work. How can we continue to make this work? So uh, we talked, and, and uh, I'm going to fill out an application to get grants uh, for some of the giveaways that they have. And there's some parameters, and we'll have meetings, and we're going to do things. And, and, you know, there's some things we will not participate in, and some things we will participate in. We don't have to accept everything. We're just going to join this partnership, just like with Toys for Cause or different things. It's just a partnership for different activities. And, uh, and we've got some things coming for Corcoran, too. We're working on that. But right now, I just want to talk about Alpha. Uh, and so Brother Brito and Sister Brito were there. Not Burrito, but Brito, right? I don't want to make you hungry. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and so they were, they were there. And Brother Brito, I forgot that he was in the military before. And I told him, he said, hey, bro, you know, what other building can we look for? And I said, I said, you know, I really want the memorial building, but I can't get a hold of anybody. I've been trying for almost three months. I've been texting and calling the guy 10, 15 times just over the last three months. And he's not answering my calls. And he goes, give me the number. I'll, I'll get a hold of him. He goes, and if he don't like it, I'll go over his head. I said, well, I don't want to stir up trouble. He goes, no, 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 no. He goes, I'm a veteran. He goes, I'm a former captain of the Marine unit. Thank you. Lord. He goes, and they have to provide this building to me for free. Yeah, right. Thank you, Lord. I said, okay, well, let's see what you can do. So I gave him the number. He, he prayed about it last night and this morning, and he called. And the guy called him back during service. Well, we were, uh, during song service, he called back. Then Brother Brito came over here. You know how he is. I got it, Captain. <laughs> and I came out, and we went outside, and he goes, you don't have to worry about the memorial building anymore. It's yours for any Sunday you want to use it. So I said, well, that's great. How much is it? He goes, how, I said, how much is it? He goes, oh, it's for a veteran. It's free. Fridays, he used to make some Saturday stuff, just occasional. He goes, don't worry, I'll take care of it. You just tell me what you need and we'll get it done. Yeah. Because this is for the cause of Christ. Yeah. 
Yeah. Amen. And the souls of the community. Amen. And then we've got uh, in November, you know, we've got some possibilities in November and, and then December, Brother Burrito, again, he's in charge of the uh, Toys for Tots giveaway at Mount Zion. He's going to incorporate us into that, into the number. We're going to get some toys for Corcoran. And now, apparently, we're going to get some toys for Outlaw, too. So, I remember Elder Morton a long time ago, many, many years ago, and he's mentioned it over the years, but I went back and listened to the original message, and he preached about let it unfold. And uh, some of you have heard this. Please forgive me. We're going we're gonna to go into song service right now, but I just felt to keep talking about this. It says, we can get frustrated in what God is wanting us to do. He gives us a little glimpse, a little vision of, of something, you know, of desire. And we want to run with it, and God, where are you at? Guilty. I'm guilty. Anybody else guilty? Right? And we get a little frustrated with what we think God should be doing yesterday. Right? Because he gave us a glimpse of it. But throughout the Old Testament, there were types and shadows of things to come. And didn't get unfolded for many, many, many generations, 42 generations to be exact, of some things. And so then we have to realize that uh, we get impatient, but God has his own time frame. And we have to remind ourselves, I have to remind me that this is not what me wants, but what God wants. And so then as we go into this thing, we just got to, as Elder Morton said, just let it unfold. Let it unfold. I have to remind myself constantly. Just let it unfold. I get frustrated, but we've got to let it unfold. I, I get upset. It's like, well, chill out, boy. You know, I look myself in the mirror and say, you better knock it off. I talk to myself all the time. I encourage myself, kick myself if I could. And just tell me, you better knock it off because God's got a plan. And if we try too hard, we're going to frustrate the will of God. Just like Moses did when the Lord told Moses, speak to the rock. And he let the frustration of the people get to him. And he got upset and he said, I'll show you folks, stubborn, stiff-necked people. And he struck the rock and water came out. God honored it. But then the Lord told Moses, come here, come here, come here. We, we, we can't go on forward anymore. You missed the shift. You missed what I was trying to do. You didn't understand. You let the frustration get to you. Now I have to change plans. Don't get so frustrated with what God is giving you or the promises that he's sharing with you. Is that all right with everybody? Yeah. Amen. That you frustrate the will of God. And now God has to change plans around because you stepped out of your lane. We step out of our lane all the time. Amen. But there's times where we need to stay in our lane. And no matter how boring, how dull, no matter how much it just seems like it's just impatient, it's lasted forever, it's just on and on, how long is this going to last, I can't take this anymore, and all that good stuff. And we just think we're going to wake out and all these things, but just if we just let God begin to unfold those things, you will see how much better God does it than we do. Amen, somebody. Let's see.
Just 
sober in the great beyond, where the sake of her shall soon glory share.
Let's do our best to just wear him out. Now he's here. I'm telling him in person, okay? We're going to wear you out, brother, okay? All right. We're, you're already tuckered out, but we're going to grind you to the ground. We're just going to see a puddle with shoes, all right? <laughs> Amen. We're going to have a good time tonight. Amen. But most importantly, we want to hear the word. Amen. And let it sink down into our hearts. Yes. Right. Everybody good thing to Amen. Good morning. Come on. We love you. Appreciate you. You've been here before. We want you back again sometime soon. church times and we think about what other people need and uh, it seems like that sometimes we don't ever expect anything to happen to us. But I want you to, to not be that way tonight. I want you to expect God to do something good for you tonight. Yeah. He's not going to overlook you. He's going to see right where you are and He wants to touch you and bless you and help you. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Brother Cruz, for allowing me to come. I really mean that. Thank you, Praise Team. Thank you for all your hard work and everybody to show up. Hallelujah. Uh, I told a, a, a church in uh, Mount Zion, I told them, I said, as hot as it is, it's, it's um, sometimes you don't even have to preach on hell because we're, we're, we're <laughs> Because it's hot. <laughs> It's like, oh, you preach on hell? It's like, hey, let me get it. So we, we, we're living in it. So uh, I understand it's hot. Uh, I woke up early this morning around 6 o'clock. I preached twice already, and this is about my third time today. And I, I, he's talking about I'll be in a puddle. I feel like I already am in a puddle. So that, it's already feels like that. I'm, I'm already there. So hallelujah. I wonder if you could just stand really quick with me. We're going to go to the word of the Lord. We're going to ask God to help us today. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something about the word of the Lord. The Bible says that it's quick. A lot of people just think that for God to do something really, really great for me, it's going to take a while. But the Bible says the word of the Lord is quick. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that the word of the Lord can start working in your life so fast, and He can do things in your life so quickly. You're just going to have to believe it and trust it. Because yes. I, I believe that God wants to do some great things yes. in this house today for somebody. Yes. I want God to do that quick work in me. Yes. Amen? Amen. I believe in Jesus' name. Acts chapter number 1, verse number 15. We'll also be going to 1 John 5. Uh, I mean, 1 John 1 and 5. But Acts 1... Chapter, uh, verse number 15. It said, In those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus, for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased the field with the reward of iniquity, Falling headlong, he burst asunder and his, and all of his bowels gushed out. Well, that's a, that's a horrible verse. Right. It was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem in so much that the field is called in their proper tongue and killed them up. That is to say, the field of blood. The field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate. And let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. And then... 1 John chapter number 1, 1 John chapter number 1, verse number 5. It says, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, be a fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ, the 
His Son cleanseth us from all sin. Yes. Not just the small ones that seem so in insignificant to you. Those ones that you think that you've already done. And there's just no way that God could ever change any of that. But the Bible says if we if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God's got a specific word for a specific person in this house today. I believe as, as I get to preaching tonight, that you're going to thank your pastors for talking to me about you. But I want to let you know that we don't talk about you. <laughs> you know, somebody said one day, you know, you always think that everybody's talking about you, and then they say, you know what? Everybody's talking to you. <laughs> but I don't mean it like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I really do feel like that God's going to talk to somebody here tonight. If you'll let God talk to you, then you'll start talking to Him. I believe some good things will happen in your life. Amen. I want to, I'm going to preach just for a few hours tonight. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. This, I, want to, I want to speak on this subject. You don't have to die in your dilemma. You don't have to die in your dilemma. In Jesus' name. God, we love you so very much. Thanking you for all that you have done today. You have done great things today. You have filled a number of people with the Holy Ghost. You have saved people. You have touched people. But God, I don't believe you're done yet. I believe you're going to do some great things in this house before we leave. We'll be quick to give you all praise and honor and glory yes, for you yes, today. Yes. In Jesus' name. Can you say in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. You can be seated. Thank you so much for standing. seeks to steal and to kill and to destroy. I really mean this tonight that I believe that Satan is relentless in his attack against you. Right. It doesn't matter how much you pray. It doesn't matter how many stones you turn over. Right, right. How many new leaves that you turn over. How many times that you tell God that this time I'm going to do better. And you tell the devil that get behind me, or we say things like punch the devil in the eye. <laughs> we say things like stomp on the devil's head. Yeah. And we, we, we say all of these things, but I'm going to tell you right now, no matter what you do, it will never get the devil to give up on you. That's right. That's right. He's relentless right. 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 Come on with his attack into your life. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's not going to give up on you. Come on. Yeah. It doesn't matter how long you live for God. Right. He's going to continue to talk to you. He's going to continue to knock on your door. All right. He's going to continue to lie to you because he's patient. Yeah. And he doesn't mind small victories. He wants to get you so entangled in the sin yes, that you will one day throw up your hands and say, it's just too much and give up. He's wanting to do that. And right. so if he was willing to uh, to be patient with you. He'll sow seeds. And he know it may take a long time for those seeds to take fruition in your life. But he's relentless. And he'll keep sowing. If you pick them out and throw them away and shout on a Sunday night, it doesn't deter him. Monday morning. It may not be Monday morning. It may be Sunday afternoon. Right on your way home. He's going to keep on trying. You can punch him and he can have a black eye yeah. and with one eye he'll look at you.
at you and say, are you sure? Yes. And he'll try to get you again. That's He's right. relentless. Right, yeah. But here's what the devil wants to do. He wants to get you so entangled in your situation. He wants to get you so entangled in sin that you throw your hands up and you give up on God and you give up on yourself. And I want to tell you today that no matter what the devil has placed in your life, or how long he's been working on you. And all the lies that he said. And then all the things that you've entangled yourself in. That you think disqualifies you from the grace and the mercy of God. I want to tell you today that we still serve a merciful and a gracious and a loving God. That says I don't care what you've done. You don't have to die in your dilemma. That if you'll just come to me. That I can help you. I can be nice and kind and long-suffering to your spirit. And I can help you when you think that you're unhelpful. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. That's the way sin is. There's times that sin will just start small. And it seems like that it just starts working on you very, very small. And just starts working on you. And he's very patient. He's patient. And he just works. And, uh... And, and it just works that way, where he just, he just, you, you say no to him a hundred times, and yet, and yet he'll just continue to just slowly work his way in, and little by little, he'll get you so entangled into your sin, into your life, that you'll look around and you'll think, even God can't get me out of this. And this is where uh, Judas was. Let me tell you something. Judas, this is where he found himself. He found himself so entangled in his sin. I, it wasn't big when it started. It, it was small. But the devil somehow began to interject himself into Judas's life. Where it was not long before he had sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. And when he watched the, the Savior of the world die on a cross, it became so large to him that he thought there's no way that I could ever get out of the dilemma that I had gotten myself in. I want to tell you today the devil loves to blame you for everything he has done to you. He loves to say to you that you're the reason why that you are the way you are. And he will leave himself out of the equation. But I've got another thing to tell him. I know that he's a liar. He's a liar and he's the father of all lies. And there is a God that sees your life. He sees what you've done. I know that, uh, that you think that it's such a big deal. But I promise you today, he's forgiven bigger sins that you have. He's changed lives way worse than yours. He's straightened out paths that were way worse than what the one that you're traveling down. So I want to preach hope into your spirit. It's time for you to get up again. It's time for you to find yourself an altar. It's time for you to lift your hands again and give God another shot at your spirit and your soul. And no, God, I'm not going to die in this dilemma. I'm going to let you forgive me. I'm going to let you change me. I'm going to let you pull me out of this spirit. The Bible says a bruised reed, he will not break. Yeah. Let me tell you about that man. Sometimes we read the Bible and it just says, wow, well, okay. And then we just read it and we have no idea what that means. Well, right. let, let me just uh, uh, help you a little bit of what that means. A bruised reed, we all realize that uh, uh, a, a woodwind instrument is basically an instrument that you play and it has a little small uh, wooden reed that you put on the mouthpiece. And, and you begin, uh, you get it wet. You get it kind of wet, and then you begin to blow on it a certain way. And that, that reed is, is so perfectly shaped, and, and uh, it, it begins to play wonderful music. But, but because of, uh, uh, of being wet and then drying out, and then getting wet again and drying out, and the wind that you blow over it, after a while, it begins to crack, and it begins right. to crumble, and right. it begins to get old. And then you hear somebody start playing, and all of a sudden, you hear that bad note they hit. <laughs> and you look at them like, yeah, that, that didn't sound too good. <laughs> that, you, you may want to uh, try to do that one over.
for. But here, here's what the problem is. It's not them. Right. It's just that real cheap reed. Right. And yeah. so they would take that reed and they just take it off and they throw it in the trash because they buy it by the dozens. Right. And then you get a new one and you put it back on and all of a sudden you kind of get it wet a little bit and you start blowing it and it sounds wonderful and you can keep on going with the concert. Here's what Jesus said. A bruised reed. Hallelujah. It seems like it's so insignificant that it's so easy just to throw it away. It doesn't mean anything. But God said if you think that you're a bruised reed and that uh, you have no music left in your yeah. life and that there's nothing good that's ever going to come out of you again that the songs of Zion will never escape out of your spirit again I want to tell you God is saying I've got news for you this bruised reed I'm not going to break it I'm going to play beautiful music out of your life I can change you I can help you I can put my spirit in you and you better than you were before. He said a smoking flax. Will he not snuff out? And you know, think about that and you think, wow, I, that, that kind of goes over my head and I don't understand what that is. Let me tell you what it is. It's just a little piece of insignificant twine that they found all over the place. It was some leaves. It was it was a few things that they could wind together. And they would make this little wick. And they would put it in oil and it would give out light. But just like anything, it wears out. And it begins to get black. And it begins to get brittle. And so when you go to light it, the flame is very, very small. And it flickers and it smokes and more smoke then flame and, 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 and you sit there and you're thinking, I can't see anything. It's putting black smoke everywhere. And so they would take this insignificant piece of string and they would take it and they would just throw it away. And they'd have it some a new one and they'd put it in its place because you could get it anywhere. Literally you could go down the street and you could find them on the side of the streets. And just anywhere you take these little things and you wind them together. They literally, you didn't almost have, didn't have to even buy them. They were so insignificant. And this is what people think about them themselves. They think about their life. Yes. They think about all the stuff that, and the promises that they've made God and the times that they said they were going to do better and didn't and the things that they said and sin has gotten so into their life to where it grips their mind and their spirit and their heart yeah. and so they don't pray, they don't think God loves them, they don't think that God really cares about them, but you need to hear what he said. He said a smoky flax, will he not snuff out? He says that he know, you know, it seems like that you think that uh, that God doesn't love you and that that flame will never really be bright anymore. But I want to tell you, the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. You are not insignificant. He made you in his own image. And what the devil has done to you and what the devil has destroyed in you and he has ravaged your faith. He has ravaged your trust and your hope. He has taken away the love and the joy and the singing in your life. And you think this is my lot. I'll never be anything. I'm easy to throw away. There's a God that says I will not throw you away. I hear every prayer you pray. I see every time you clap your hands. I see every time you sing. Your spirit to me is still wonderful. don't have to die in your dilemma. Hallelujah. Uh, one day, Jesus decides to look at his disciples and he says these words, I must needs go through Samaria. Yeah. I want to tell you today, it, 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 it seems so insignificant until you learn what that statement right. was. Right. Right. Anyone, anyone that was going anywhere had to take a detour right. to go to Samaria. Samaria was not a place where you'd want to go. Samaria wasn't on the way to anywhere. It was off the beaten path. You had to stop going to the good place <laughs> to get to Samaria. And the Bible said, Jesus said this, I must needs go to Samaria. Hallelujah. When he got there, it was noon. It was in the middle of the day. It was hot. <coughs> it was hot. 
and here met him, a woman coming to the well to get water. And see, if we don't study and if we don't look at, sometimes we read and these scriptures don't really mean anything to us. But I'm going to tell you, if you do a little study about when women went to get water, it was not at noon. It was always early in the morning. First of all, the water had been undisturbed. It was allowed all night long to rise. Yeah. All the nastiness, all the dirt, all the sediment, everything that was already had settled into the bottom. It was pure water. It was cool. Everyone walked together. Every woman, every woman walked together. So they had fellowship one with another. They had time. They had safety in numbers. It was cool. There was no heat in the day. They had fresh water. They had everything they wanted. And they could take water back to their families so that they could have fresh water all day long. No one came to get water in the middle of the day in the heat by themselves. Number one, it wasn't safe. Number two, it was scorching hot. Number three, the water was basically mud. Number four is that you needed water a long time ago. What are you waiting for noon? There was a reason why this lady had come at noon. She didn't want to come with anyone. The Bible said she had five men. None of them were her husband. And the one that she was with now, her six, was not her husband either. No one wanted to give her his last name. That she was insignificant. She she didn't come with the other women because she was scared of what they would say. She didn't come in the cool because she didn't want them staring at her and talking about her of who she was. So she came in the middle of the day. I don't have to talk to anyone. I don't have to meet anyone. I'm just going to live my life of insignificance until she looked up and she saw Jesus sitting on well, honey, I'm telling you right now, there was a reason why he was there. He was there because he was telling her, you're still important to me. You may not think much about your own life, but I think that you're enough to save. I love you enough to save you. I love you enough to come and to save you and to help you. to die in your dilemma. Don't get so so bent out of shape with sin. It doesn't matter what you've said. It doesn't matter of what you've said to people. Sometimes we, we get ourselves in situations and we say certain things to people and then we don't want to show up when they're around because we're embarrassed and we're ashamed of things that we've said. And so we don't even want to be around them. And so, I mean, it, it just happens. I mean, you you go into the store and you're headed down an aisle and all of a sudden they come down the other aisle and you're like, oh. <laughs> and you just kind of walk off and you, you, you just be willing to lay all your groceries and leave it right there and just say, I'm walking out. I, I'm not going to talk to them. I'm not going to do that. I'll just go back and I'll just re shop and do it all over again. And so you go home and your husband looks at you like, what, what, what happened? Well... I didn't want to talk to them. I, I don't. I, I just. I'll just go back. Yeah, but it's not convenient. Yeah, but it ain't convenient to talk to them either. What? What? What is going on in our life? We get so caught up in our situation that that our sin entangles us so much that we literally think that it's best off to die. Can you imagine your sin being as bad as? As Judas, to where he thinks the only thing, the best thing for him is for him to take his own life. I want to tell somebody in this house, how much shame are you dealing with that you think that taking your life is the best thing that you can do? Honey, I'm telling you, even in the midst of that, Jesus looked and said, I'm not going to snuff you out. You don't need to go take your life. If you're here today, Judas, and you don't have any worship in you, and you don't have any love in you, and it seems like you messed up so many times that you have nothing to live for, I want to tell you there's a God that wants to tell you again that He loves you, that He cares about you, that He has 
plans for your life. That he wants to bless you. He wants to help you. He wants to forgive you. Let's stand all of this house. Hallelujah, Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's a great story in the Bible. There's a prophet named Hosea. Hosea was a prophet. God told him, I want you to go down to the red light district and I want you to grab one of those women and I want you to make her your wife. I'm going to tell you this right now. There'd be a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> when, the, when the prophet walks into his church. <laughs> and people are looking like, and you say, well, hi, who are you? Oh, I'm the pastor's wife. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then, so somebody, you know, I'm not looking at you. I'm just, I'm just using you. <laughs> but I can't, can you imagine? I mean, everybody kind of walk, are you okay? I mean, you know, I mean, you, you know, I mean, this this is a little far-fetched. What, 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 and then, then he says, God told me to. And, then, and, and people are like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Bible said they had children. And God told him to name them names that were not names that he would name kids. Names that when he told people to their names was, it was very indicting to them because it was telling them of who they were. The Bible said that one day he came home, his wife wasn't there. So he asked the kids, hey, where's mom? We don't know if she said she was going to go to the store. So she waited, or he waits, and waits, and she never doesn't come home. And so he decides, I, 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 you stay right here, guys. I, I'm going to go try to find her. And he, he goes down to the market, begins to ask people, hey, do you see my wife? And no, we haven't seen her. And then after a while, people people just look at him like, you you know where she is, right? I mean, come on, it, does it surprise you? Does it surprise you that your wife is down where, where, where you found her? found her in the first place. That, that's what that's what she is. The Bible said that he went down there and found her in the arms of her lover. Not, not walking back. But found her in the arms of her lover. And God said, I want you to take her. And this is what he said, I want you to love her. How to? That's hard. That, that's rough. I, I don't know about you. <laughs> I think my wife just slit my throat. You know what I'm saying? I just think my wife, would just like I said this morning, she would tell me, you know, go to sleep. Now, if you're having an argument with your wife and she says go to sleep, you better stay awake. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> you, you better stay wide awake. Think, think about, think about that. I mean, you really do. You think about that. But it happened over and over and over again until finally the Bible says he went down there and he couldn't even find her there. And the Bible said he found her at an auction block where they were selling cattle. They were selling pigs and sheep and cattle. And there she was, dirty, used up beaten, abused, standing there, and someone is selling her like an animal. And God says, won't you buy her? And I can just, I, I have a great imagination. And I can just see someone saying, all right, anybody got a few pennies? And somebody from the back, well, I got a hundred dollars. And I'm looking at him and saying, well, Dude, we're talking pennies. You're you're bidding against yourself. <laughs> Two hundred. And they're like, what what are you doing? What are you doing? Do we're, we're, we're pennies in three hundred. He's bidding against himself. 
You said, what are you doing? She's not worth that much yet, but I'm letting her know how much she's worth. I'm not going to buy her for what she thinks she's worth or what somebody else thinks she's worth. I'm going to buy her for what she's really worth. I'm going to give everything I have. I'm going to empty out my pocketbook. I'm going to empty out my savings. I'm going to empty out everything. I'm going to buy her. And he bought her. And the Bible said he took her home and cleaned her up and said, Now, you're mine. You don't have to do this anymore. You're bought with a price. You're mine. You're my property. He said God was telling them of who they were to him. That so many times they had walked away and they gotten so entangled in their sin and so entangled in their life that they thought there was no way to ever turn around and get better. Oh, but God said this time, I'll pay the ultimate price and I'll give you everything that I have. I'll give you my own blood. I'll give you my life because I'm going to let you know how, how wonderful and how great you really are. If there's anything the devil wants you to believe and he wants you to believe it, you're just not worth much. But God says, this is how much you're worth. You're worth my life. I'll give my whole life so that you can have your life. I want to tell somebody today, you do not have to die in your dilemma. You do not have to die in your sin. You do not have to die the way you are. There's a way out. There's a way out. There's a way out. And God says, why don't you just come on and let me touch you and bless you again. If you're here today and you want to pray, I want you to step out from where you are. I want you to walk across this front today and stand and say, God, I'm coming today to let you know that I'm responding to your love. I'm responding to you. And I'm not going to die in my situation. I'm not going to let my life get so entangled that I allow it to destroy my life. I'm going to allow your love and your mercy and your grace to work on me and to give me another life. Are you here tonight? You want to pray? You want to talk to God? Come on, somebody, you've been praying for something for a long time and the devil's told you you might as well forget about it, that God is not really concerned about you. I'm here to tell you that God loves you. The devil's a liar. That God loves you more than you can ever understand. Come on, let's pray together. Come on, let's find a place. Let's pray one with another. Come on, can somebody say, God, I'm coming to you tonight. I'm coming to you tonight. And I'm going to allow you to talk to me. I'm going to allow you to speak to me. I'm going to allow you to put your hands on me. And to touch me. And to help me. God, there's hope for me. God, I know that you love me. And there's hope for my life. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I give you the love.
and you didn't see it online, there's a YouTube page called Mount Zion Apostolic Church. You need to go listen to that message this morning. Amen. And, and then listen to this one again tonight. Amen. This is going to go up on our YouTube page as well. Amen. In, in a couple of days, we'll have it up and running. Amen. And you'll see. And then you need to listen. It's, it's one, these kind of messages where you're going to pick something up. It's like, wow, that was good. That was very impactful. And then you go back and listen to it later. And you say, I didn't he remember hearing that. You're going to, you're going to say that, wow, that was better than I thought. That was more impactful than I remember. But the important thing is that the connection was made from heaven to earth. Right here, right now. To get us thinking, get us moving, get us going. Because it's in the right place at the right time when God moves. And God was moving right here and right now. And you were here and you were moving with him. Amen. And so as you put that connection together, God's going to do a powerful work in you. It's Christ in you that's the hope of glory. Amen, somebody. Amen. It's not of ourselves, but it's all about him. He gives us the strength. He told Paul, my grace is good enough for you. You don't need anything else. You don't have to try to perfect it. You're not going to make it perfect, but I'm here to give you what you need. Praise God. God bless you all. Love you. Appreciate every one of you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Brother Morgan. Amen. For squeezes of the sin in between. Amen. We weren't the sandwich in between, but we were the top. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I know how hard it is to preach three sermons in a day. That's, I haven't done it very much, but I've done it a couple times, and that's that's tiring. That is really tiring. That's See, when, you, when you're preaching, you're not just giving a message that you memorize or, or read some notes, but it comes from the gut. It comes from the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is moving in you, and you, you cannot help but give everything you've got in that message. Amen. Amen. And so we appreciate that very much. Amen. That's, that's, that comes with the anointing. That comes with the territory. That's what he signed up for. Amen. But that's he's doing the work that God called him to do. And God called you to do a work. Amen. For him. Amen. Live for him every day. One day at a time. That's all it takes. One day at a time. Sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. Amen. Let's not forget Monday night ladies Bible study. Uh, Tuesday night Bible study here at 7 o'clock. Amen. We've got our uh, outreach at the farmer's market on Friday. We're going to set up at 4.30. I'm actually going to be able to make it after all. Yeah, I'm going to make it and uh, to help set up. So I'll bring my truck and bring stuff. And you don't have to worry about doing all that. And uh, thank you, ladies. Um, but I still need you there to help me. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, we got, you know, it's revival. It's revival. We're doing, we're busy. The devil is going to attack. He's, but he's a what? A liar, right? Right? Mentiroso. Right? And so he's going to throw his things. He's going to put, you know, that pastor said this, and you're going to, you know, all that stuff. And, and the preacher said this, and, you know, oh, you don't have to do all that. You know what? You know, just follow what God was doing. Just follow what God was doing. Just follow what God was doing. Man, it seems so hard, but it's not. It's not hard to just obey the Lord. Amen. And you just got to want to. You just got to have a want to. I still feel the Holy Ghost so strong. I, I want to cut you loose, but the Lord won't cut me loose. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not going to hold you forever. God bless you. Love you all. Appreciate you. See you soon.